viewers, welcome to Nursat Satellite Channel and Tel Lumiere TV. Let's start with the headlines. Pope Francis, let us open ourselves to the light of Jesus and may the Virgin Mary help us look at each other with love. His Majesty the King participates in airborne operations to provide aid to the people of Gaza. Cardinal Pizzabella meets with the community of Jbeha and its youth and scouts activities. Patriarch Theophilus III emphasizes the cooperation of the priesthood in resolving family disputes. Welcome back. Pope Francis led the Angelus Prayer with the gathered believers in St. Peter's Square in the Vatican. Before the prayer, His Holiness delivered a speech stating that the Gospel for the second Sunday of Lent recounts the transfigurations of Jesus after he had announced his suffering to the disciples. He urged them not to turn their eyes away from this light, especially in moments close to pain. Pope Francis continued saying, We as Christians are called to walk in the journey of life keeping our gaze constantly on the bright face of Christ. He emphasized the need to seek Christ's face filled with mercy, trust, and hope. The Pope highlighted that continuous prayer, listening to the Word, and contemplating the mysteries will assist us in doing so. The Holy Father concluded his word by expressing the hope that the Virgin Mary, illuminated by God's light, would help us keep our gaze fixed on Jesus and look at each other with confidence and love. King Abdullah II warned against the continuation of the war in Gaza during the blessed month of Ramadan which would increase the risk of the conflict expanding. His Majesty emphasized the need to exert maximum efforts to reach an immediate and permanent ceasefire in Gaza, protecting innocent civilians. He highlighted that Jordan will continue providing humanitarian relief and medical aids to its brothers and sisters in the sector. King Abdullah II cautioned against Israeli escalation in the West Bank, condemning the actions of extreme settlers against Palestinians and the violations of Islamic and Christian sanctities in Jerusalem. The king reiterated Jordan's rejection of any attempts to separate the West Bank and Gaza, considering them as an extension of one Palestinian state. On another note, His Majesty King Abdullah II participated in airborne operations carried out by aircraft belonging to the Royal Jordanian Air Force to provide humanitarian and relief aid to the people in Gaza. A statement from the Jordanian Armed Forces confirmed that His Majesty's participation reaffirms Jordan's commitment to stand by the Palestinian brothers and deliver assistance through all available means to the residents of the Gaza Strip. King Abdullah II directly monitored the preparation and loading stages of the aircraft before their takeoff from the King Abdullah II Air Base. These airdrops aimed at delivering aid directly to the population by dropping it onto the Gaza coast. The operation was conducted without parachute guidance system, requiring the aircraft to fly at low altitudes. His Beatitude Cardinal Pierre Battista Bizzabella, the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, concluded a pastoral visit to the Church of St. Paul the Apostle in Jebeha that lasted three days. Upon his arrival to the church, he was welcomed by Father Samrim Denat, the parish priest, and its youth and scouts activities, as well as the Meriamat Fraternity for Mothers. During the visit, his beatitude presided over several divine liturgies in the presence of numerous believers. He also made visits, including one to the University of Jordan, where he met with administrative authorities in the area. Additionally, he visited the Patriarchate School and Kindergarten, engaging in discussions with the teaching staff and listening to their concerns. His schedule also included visits to the patients with special needs and families of the parish in their homes. Cardinal Pizzabella's tour encompassed visits to the Diwan of Al-Hijazin al Akashi clans at the headquarters of the Rawabi Association in Amman. The meetings involved clergy, nuns, and families from both clans. The visit, which is the first visit to the church since his appointment as a cardinal, concluded with an extensive meeting with the parish activities, during which he familiarized himself with their lives, exchanged views on ecclesiastical matters, and discussed the situation of Christians in the region. Cardinal Pizzabella affirmed his continuous support for the church in Gaza and expressed his ongoing concern for the well-being of the faithful amidst the ongoing conflict in that region. His Beatitude Kyrios Kyrios Theophilus III, the Patriarch of the Holy City, Palestine and Jordan, inaugurated the headquarters of the Christian Family House in the Kingdom. The event was attended by Bishop Christophorus Atalla, the Holy Economist Archimandrite Irinius Mdanat, the head of Christian Family House, and representatives from the marriage office along with several priests and deacons. In his remark, his Beatitude explains the significance of the Christian Family House as a center dedicated to education, supporting, and assisting families and individuals. He emphasized the importance of spiritual life, the sacrament of repentance, confession, and spiritual fatherhood to form a holistic approach to human salvation. His beatitude also stressed the collaboration between spiritual fathers and the Christian family house, as well as the assistance provided by specialized experts to the scattered faithful across the kingdom. The role of the Christian family house focuses on addressing family issues, resolving problems, and handling family conflicts. On another note, 
His Eminence, Archbishop Christophorus Atalla, the Orthodox Archbishop of Jordan, presided over the first divine liturgy service at the Church of the Three Moons in Dibin. The service was attended by several priests, deacons, and a dignified presence of officials and the public. At the conclusion of the service, Bishop Atalla performed the service of water consecration, sanctifying the new church and the present congregation with holy water. Following this, Bishop Atalla invited the congregation to participate in the priesthood, encouraging all parishioners in this secure country to serve. He lifted prayers for the mercy of God upon the Holy Land of Palestine, especially Gaza, praying for the cessation of the bloody war and the attainment of peace. Bishop Atallah then expressed gratitude to Mr. Isa Nasif Ode, representing the clergy and the parish, for his generous donation to this project that serves everyone, under the intercession of the Holy Mother of God and the Church's intercessors. It is worth noting that during the excavations of the Church and the Three Moons, an ancient church dating back to the 4th century AD was discovered beneath the foundations. The floor of the ancient church, adorned with mosaics, was transferred and incorporated into the floor of the new church. In the Holy Land as well, approximately 500 Christian students from 15 schools in Jerusalem answered the invitation of the General Secretariat of Christian Schools in Jerusalem to participate in the Cross Path March. Following the footsteps of Christ, the march took place at the same location where the extraordinary love story unfolded a thousand years ago. The participating children prayed for peace in Gaza and all the Holy Lands. Before the march, the students held a special prayer and then proceeded, carrying the cross and fervently praying for an end to the war and for peace to prevail in the region. The prayer concluded inside the Church of the Custody of the Holy Land with a message from the custodian of the Holy Land, Father Francisco Paton, addressing the students. He emphasized the importance of holding on to hope in the current circumstances, continuing to pray for justice and peace in Gaza and all of Palestine. Priests, monks, nuns and a gathering of students and their families also took part in this march. At the invitation of the Memory House, affiliated with the Jerusalem Museum Network, an event titled Journalists on the Line of Fire took place in the Faisal al husseini Hall in Amman. The event, attended by national, union, diplomatic and media figures, featured an exhibition of photos depicting around 130 Palestinian journalists who lost their lives during the ongoing war in Gaza. Additionally, videos were presented showcasing journalists in Gaza Strip steadfastly facing the front lines against the Zionist enemy. During the event, attendees issued a call to international entities to take effective and genuine measures to protect journalists in Gaza from deliberate and direct targeting by Israeli occupational forces. In the conclusion, a hall with a memory house was inaugurated in honor of the slain journalist Shirin Abu Akleh, who was killed by Israeli army gunfire while covering clashes in Jenin. The event also included the honoring of the ambassador of the Republic of South Africa, Shilani Mokwena, who was awarded the Order of Jerusalem as a tribute to her country's stance against the Israeli occupation. Participating journalists praised the outcomes achieved by the event. During the Saudi media forum held in Riyadh, Cardinal Louis Rafael Sacco participated along with a group of religious scholars and media activists in a discussion on interfaith dialogue and the promotion of a culture of peace, brotherhood and coexistence. His beatitude stated that media in all its forms hold significant influence over the individuals and societies, impacting people's thoughts, decisions and behaviors. He urged the media to carry a message that enhances awareness among people and contributes to their upbringing in a sound manner. Cardinal de Sacco emphasized that the role of religious leaders is essential in educating people with a wholesome upbringing based on brotherhood, peace, and the preservation of their rights, freedoms, and dignity. He highlighted that through this open and enlightened approach, it is possible to combat terrorism and dismantle extremist social ideologies that threaten national and global security. Here, dear viewers, we have reached the end of our news. Before we conclude, here's a recap of the highlights covered herein. Pope Francis, let us open ourselves to the light of Jesus and may the Virgin Mary help us look at each other with love. His Majesty the King participates in airborne operations to provide aid to the people of Gaza. Cardinal Pizzabella meets with the community of Jbeha and its youth and scouts activities. Patriarch Theophilus III emphasizes the cooperation of the priesthood in resolving family disputes. For more information, please visit our website nursajo.org. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you again. Have a good day.